like we're videoing ourselves arriving at the Denali bus depot. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining here at Denali. I don't know, I wanted to take a free shuttle, but with the rain, I didn't want to hike. I thought we would just take the tour shuttle, which costs a little more, but it's raining. It's raining. Yeah. And leaving ourselves open to um, being spontaneous travelers. Which means, roughly, we don't have a plan at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we were able to get a um, campsite here in Denali, so that's super that's cool. Really cool. We get out to the park. The closer we get to the base of the mountain. Where we turn around today at the East Fork River is the new end of the park road. Has anybody heard about the landslide that happened out here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We start out thinking one thing about how the day is going to go and wind up doing something different. These big trips, I found, are best if only planned kind of loosely. God will provide the cool stuff and better than you could plan it. We take off from the Borealis Hotel and head south to Denali. It's about a two and a half hour drive. On the way, we stop for gas and meet a local. It's been like this the whole way, just lovely conversation with strangers. Lori and this young lady talk for 15 minutes while I get gas. After we're back on the road to Denali, the views are spectacular in spite of the rain and clouds. There's a constant chill to the air as we drive finally into Denali. We expect to hike for the day and find a camping spot somewhere outside of the National Park. Instead, we get on a five and a half hour long wildlife viewing bus tour where we get to see the grizzly we've been hoping for. We also meet Tim and Juanita from Arizona, a wonderful couple. We also managed to grab a campsite in Denali in the same campground as Tim and Juanita. Juanita visits our campsite several times with her dog, Nola. We have wonderful conversation with perfect strangers, strangers no longer. Sleep doesn't come easy with night only being a few hours long. Daylight lingers well into the night, making sleep terribly timid. When sleep finally does get over her bashfulness and come to visit, she is restful and welcome.
believe that I'm camping in Denali National Park. Talkeetna Inn is our stay in Talkeetna. It's a pretty nice place, really, for $100 a night. I mean, camping would be 40 or 50 bucks, unless you found a free spot. And then with the way our camper's set up, You'd have to close down the camp completely before you came in for your, hopefully, air flight in the morning at 8 o'clock. It is only a two hour drive to Talkeetna from Denali, and yet again clouds, rain, and cold are on the menu of the day. We have a plane ride over Denali for tomorrow, so we're praying for clear skies. We spent our day wandering the shops of this quaint little town, peeking 
into stores selling all sorts of touristy, crafty knickknacks and bric-a-brac. We walk into the, the, the wooden spoon and meet the spoon carver himself. We all had the best time talking about life and fathers and children and honor and hard work and the value of it all. Lori and I enjoyed the conversation immensely. We were famished and looking at all the restaurant options, but settled on Shirley's Burgers. We could not have made a better choice. We spoke with the owner, and turns out he and his wife owned the Christmas store and the burger joint in the same complex. They were wonderful to talk to. After our burgers, we went back to the hotel, anxiously awaiting the morning and the adventure that surely would arise with the morning sun. How was that? I can't go <laughs> Man, that's a big burger. That was good. <laughs> Check out this room that we rented at the Tower Keaton Inn. It's two twin beds. We stayed at all kind of crazy places. Like, there's nothing spent like a hill from a two or three hundred dollar hotel. Everything's been like eighty dollars, a hundred dollars, or something like that. And sure, some days you're just sitting around waiting on the rain to quit, so you can go get on an airplane. So they make this with the water that they cook out before they make no, it. No, he said they save. I thought that too, but he said they save some of the syrup back to make oh. their water. I would have thought that if the water pulled off, it had. It's just water. There's no carbonation to it. It's just water. So it doesn't have a kick of this. It's got a little angle there, though, but it's just water. Oh, it's smoke. I know. It's awkward. You can taste it. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. I mean, you drink a lot of lemon water. Yeah. What's the charge? I can't taste. I taste more lemony than a chaga. You want? You didn't want to try the chaga in your coffee? I don't know. That guy. That chocolate in there. The one, the home builder, cabin builder guy. On YouTube? Yeah. It's one of those um, log cabin builders. Yeah, it was. It was that guy that doesn't talk. Yes. It was, uh, um, oh, I can't think of his name. But he it was a log cabin. Yeah, he just jams that chocolate in there. Yeah. And, makes... and he used it over and over and over yeah. again. 
much I think that would be. But, uh, this is like water. It's just water. Yeah. But, and, well, yeah, the taxation is water, so. But the syrup stuff, definitely get one of the things that she's getting. Put that caramel on there. Oh, that's mm -hmm. going to be good. When I tasted that, that's what immediately what I thought of was Melina's. Cheesecake. It's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> we have only one more night in Talkeetna, and therefore only one more opportunity to fly before we move on to chicken. I can't believe you let him cut you like that. Oh my goodness. Say hello. Hello. Yeah. You get Renee Settlement press. Donna Kirby, this is the way to This is the way to grow the cat hair. This is the This is how you do it. I tag
we wake early in anticipation of our hopefully upcoming flight. At 7.15, the air taxi folks call. We've got a small break in the weather, but won't be able to do the glacier landing. We'll take it. The flight is super cloudy and very turbulent. It is, however, beautiful, and God chooses to pull the curtain back and give us a glimpse into Valley, the highest peak in North America. It is both majestic and powerful.